Well, greetings everybody. Welcome to our King's Channel. It is the last day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the seventh day, and we will get into eating a little bit with each other. Today we should have a holy convocation, so that's what I'm hoping this video is about. We also were commanded to sing and to rejoice, and so if you'll bear with me before we get to eating, let's offer a little praise to our King through song and music. glad when they said unto us let us go to the house of Yahweh our feet shall stand in your lovely gates Yerushalem pray for the peace of Yerushalem Yahweh's blessings in your palaces for our brothers and friends' sakes, we say, Peace be with you. our Father Yahweh through Yahshua. I hope that you all may have enjoyed that. I feel a little better about bringing it out and I probably should have done it before but you know at least we got it in during the feast and as we have this holy convocation I'm hoping that you've got your unleavened bread already here. I've got mine. I put the butter on. Let's put a little bit of honey and do a little bit of scarfage on this. Father Yahweh we thank you for the feast that you've allowed us to see and to understand we should come and rejoice before you because you commanded it and it's a statute forever we praise you through Yahshua your righteous son who without we would have no understanding whatsoever we thank you Yahshua for providing your body and your blood for us that we may become at one with you and our Heavenly Father through you we thank you for the understanding that only comes from you we thank you for the drink, the smoke, the food, the accommodations, you know, that you have given us, the protection. And we thank you and ask that you will further to do this for us throughout the year. And I'm, I'm really hoping that you'll gather us before the end of this year. It would be so great. Even at Pentecost, it would be a marvelous thing if you were to ask me, but your will be done. Thank you, Father, through your righteous Son, and enjoy, my brothers and sisters. May all the defiles pass through us without harm. Mmm. Mm -hmm. mm. I just made those tortillas yesterday. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we thank you for the coffee bean, the fruit of the trees. Mm -hmm. And this is organic coffee beans. I get them whole and I grind them myself from Ecuador. I got some others from Honduras and other places as well, but this Ecuadorian organic coffee tastes like chocolate. Mm -hmm. And again, thank you for putting up with me for seven days of the feast. The first day, this last day, we have a holy convocation. Tonight at sunset, this here is Friday, the second day of April. Tonight at sundown ends this wonderful feast of unleavened bread. 
but begins the regular seventh day Sabbath. Wherein I need to just bring one more video out and I hope I've got the strength for it. Today I do want to show you how much I love you, <laughs> you know, and, and what actually goes into a video. So I'm pretty wore out at this time of bringing videos. But I hope I can do it, you know, in a humorous sort of way to give our King all the honor, glory, and praise that are due Him. But with a special thanks for all of you who put up with my ways of eating that seem to lack a lot of etiquette. But let's explain how our King works in your life as He works in mine. We'll use my life as the example and I'll be right back. Well, I'm back, and I do want to thank you for being here with me that we may have a congregation, a convocation, meaning more than just one of us. And though you may be on the other side of the earth from me, it still means a lot that you're spending this time with me, and I hope you feel the same. Now, I would like to run through a short explanation as to why I'm rather exhausted from just bringing out a video for each day of the feast as I had boxed myself into doing because I said I would. And our king's been working in a special way, you know, that I, I want to explain. It's rather humorous, at least to me, because I can see it. I don't know if you can see it, but I want to point out how our king actually works in our lives. And especially those that, you know, are like my other 143,999 brothers out there, including myself. Some of the things that our king brings us through that, you know, we feel sucketh greatly <laughs> at the time, but ends up being marvelous down the road, you know, a week, a year, 10 years, 20 years down the road. The lessons we learn from some of our catastrophic disasters <laughs> that our king calls training. And he turns all these things into his glory for his honor so that we can praise him. And that's what I hope we do. Now, years ago, I felt as though I had a bit of a gift, you know. People used to always say, man, you could talk about nothing for hours, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, you know, I suppose that's true. But I tried to fill those hours with words of truth to help those that are seeking to be able to save them own selves. And when I spoke, I would speak, and I didn't have these great big areas of pauses or anything else. I, I didn't even have editing, you know, software. I didn't, I didn't know how to use editing software. I certainly didn't have the money to buy some, and I saw some that was real expensive. So then I basically had counted on just being able to speak and our king would lead me in these things to where I didn't have to edit. And that's where, you know, all the videos I had made from, like, 2013, when I first started uploading videos, I had no editing software, so I had to become a bit of a proficient speaker. Otherwise, there were these big gaps and things that I probably shouldn't say in there that I did say, but it was because our king led me to do so. And later I found out that those things were true that I was suspect of, you know, but it says prove all things. I even have to prove what I'm thinking, you know. I got to I got to prove all things, make sure my thoughts line up with our heavenly father's thoughts, and that's what I'm here helping, hoping to help y'all with is to bring your thoughts into submission to the thoughts of our heavenly father that our king can deliver to you. We're so defiled, our father wants nothing to do with us. That's, but he loves us enough that he gave his own son, who willfully, knowingly, and intentionally actually laid his life down for you to forgive your past sins, not your present sins. You shouldn't have any present sins. If you're seeking for our king, you should not be willfully, knowingly, or intentionally sinning ever again. You will sin, of course, but when you find out, it should grieve you that you did, you know? <laughs> but it's like I feel a little lax here because it was about two years ago, give or take, that I did acquire editing software, which is this Wondershare Filmora. And I want to show you, for the sake of Timothy P. especially, who does want to put out quality videos, and he does. He puts out very much quality videos as far as the words and the content and the way he speaks is just fabulous. I mean, marvelous. I really, I really enjoy it when Timothy P. puts up 
a video, but he had mentioned that he doesn't know anything about editing. And I paid like $40, I think it was, for a lifetime subscription to using the Wondershare Filmora. I use this OSB 26.1.1 program that allows me to use my camera to capture and then when I'm done recording whatever I am, and it, you, you can see the background here, it's got the, uh, this here up here shows here and then here and here and here all the way up through. But whatever's in the background is captured and it's got my little picture there and you've seen I shrunk it down. I could shrink it or make it bigger. I could, I could take up the entire screen if I wanted. Just, you know, but who wants to look at that, huh? Got a couple hairs hanging out the way. So anyway, what I want to do here is, you know, for Timothy P, for you all to understand, you know, that it's really taken a lot out of me here to bring forth these videos. I love doing it, you know. For you, I'll do everything I possibly can. And here is a, for instance, I, I take my file from after I did my recording, and I, I hit the stop recording there, and then it would bring up the file to show me where that video went to and then I just you know grab a hold of it and drag it over here and then you take this video you bring it down to the area where it will take a little bit for it to upload enough and this here is the video I told you all that I was going to bring forth for Grady Judd the sheriff of Polk County and in the purpose of doing this is to show you that if I didn't have this editing program anymore, nobody would want to listen to me because, you know, it sounds like I got Alzheimer's or something going on where there's these great big gaps here and there. And I'm, I'm asking Yahshua, it's like, why is it, Yahshua, you know, that I've got all these big gaps in between my thoughts, you know, and in all this? And I've been asking for a long time. Because it seems like now I've got the editing program, as you can see down here, hopefully, these little things. What you do is you left click on there and you just raise it up and that brings up the voice, the volume. And you can see here where it's all peaked and where there's these empty spaces. It's, it, these empty spaces are kind of like where I'm brain dead. But it's a quick tutorial to show you, Timothy P., how you can, you know, use this program. What I do is I move that bar over here, I'll click on it, and it puts up a little box there and a line here where you right-click on that box, and I hit delete here and watch. It'll go ahead, it'll go ahead and cut that little box out. Boom, box is gone. Now up here on the top they've got several different things you can use titles you can use transitions and what I use for transition always is my little signature point I'll put that little cube here down into here and then watch what takes place well greetings everybody welcome to our King's channel I'd like to introduce to you I mean, isn't this ridiculous? One of the men with the most high integrity that I've seen in an office. Please understand, I don't respect the... <laughs> okay, so now just giving you the idea, this is how this takes place all the way through here. There are some segments where I might get a minute out where I don't have to stop and stumble around or... You know, and what's actually taking place? And I'm asking our king, it's like, you know, do I have Alzheimer's or something, Yahshua? Because before I got the editing program, I would be able to bring out an entire video with your guidance leading me to bring forth the words, and it came out just marvelous, you know, as far as humanly marvelous could be because it's your words in there, you know. And now it seems like I got these big old gaps. I'm sitting there brain dead, and I've had to teach myself when I come up against a spot that I'm, I'm not certain. When I come up against this, you know, and I had to train myself when I come up to areas where I'm being led by you, and then it's like all of a sudden, poof, it's, it, your, the thoughts are gone. And, and, and when that occurs, I like try to keep myself perfectly still 
until you click back in, <laughs> you know. And if you don't, I'm kind of like left on my own. And I, I was asking our king, it's like, why is this going on? See, now, you got to realize, in order for me to put out this video here for Grady Judd, what I have to do is go back through, as you can see, over here, I believe it's going to show you, where this little red deal is in the line. I click on there, and then I have to go over to the beginning here. Now, please, again, watch how this works. Well, greetings, everybody. Welcome to our King's channel. So what I'm doing here is I put a little line right there, then I'll go over here, and I'll just guesstimate how much time should be in between the thought, you know. <laughs> And I'll go up here, I'll, I'll right click on that square, or rectangle, whatever you want to call it, and I'll hit the delete. And I'll do the same for over here. And I'll cut that. Now you got to be careful. You see down here, right over here, you see where the hand is on the bar here for controlling the voice, the volume. There's a little white arrow thing there and over here because I didn't quite click on this well enough and if I cut this part out by accident what goes on is that part of the speech just disappeared watch well greetings everybody I'd like to introduce to you see now that's not the part of the message so in order to get that piece back in you'd go back up to the edit tools all the way to the top bar and click on edit and then you'd hit undo and watch over here uh, down where the scissors are in this editing part and you'll see it just appear again poof just like that watch here we go poof you see that now what you want to do is just click on that again so that You've got that little white dealy and a little white dealy down here too. And no, this has nothing to do with racial. I mean, if it was a blue little dealy, I'd say it was a blue dealy, but it just so occurs to be white. So I'll do the right click, I'll hit the delete, and then I'll go over for one more spot, you know. And please notice that, you know, an area like this that I'm cutting out. Right now at the top it shows it's at 1 hour, 32 minutes, 17 seconds, and 24 parts of a second. So when we delete this part, it goes from, you know, 132, 17, 24, down to 132, 12, 12. So there was like five seconds of a stalling that I was left out there, you know, saying, okay, Yashua, are you going to like guide my words here, you know? And you can see all the way through here. I'll just take the little arrow here just to show you. You can see as I move the arrow, all these blank spots in there. And this goes on the whole video. So the whole video, I mean, look at this one. The whole video, I gotta go back. I gotta listen to what's being said. Approximate the amount of time should be a pause. This is a pause as I'm going through showing all the addresses up here that are in my email that I sent out to all these agencies, federal, uh, whatever it is, government agencies, police, law enforcement agencies, justice system, you know, governmental agents, all these different things, news agencies that I sent out showing that there was a notice and claim of your personal liabilities by neglect talking of title 18 of the usc subsection 4 felony of misprison which they're all guilty of and yet though every one of them should be imprisoned by their willful neglect of keeping the laws where they should report the felonies that they have heard of to a judge to someone in military authority or those that have authority to do something about the felonies that have been committed and all they did was turn their blind eye which means they're supposed to be in prison for years and yet they're still like Ted Cruz that I'm going to explain in there is running around acting as though he's got concern for anybody when he's a known felon and the proof is going to be in this video but as you can see here I'm going to click down here 
And that was an area where I was doing research. So, you know, there's a big area here that needs to be cut out. And it shows up here, 1 hour, 32 minutes, 12 seconds, and 12 parts of the second. So watch how much time was spent just there that I got to cut out. Now it's down to 1 hour, 30 minutes, and 54 seconds, and 7 parts of one. But you can see here, this is all these gaps that have to be cut out. And it takes time. And a lot of times I'll click on this thing and have to click this button... 10 times before it will bring up this box to delete that little bit. So hopefully Timothy P especially, I hope that this is something that helps you. I clicked on the elements here, I'll go to the emojis, we'll put in an emoji down here, and this is the effect it brings out. I hope that this helps you out a bit, my brother, because you really need to bring out some videos. And it's not just Senator Ted, my friend, but I have an email. They would <laughs> you like that. Did you notice? Our king had led me right here for some reason. And you see where I went through. I, I, I didn't rehearse this. I haven't even edited this yet. I simply recorded it. And yet I was talking about Ted Cruz and how he's a known felon that's protected. And yet I put an emoji there. I clicked the button. And this is how our king works in so many different ways in our lives. You know, we may say something and our king will emphasize it by, you know, bringing a tornado here or, or whatever it may be. You might have an event come up in your life that makes you reflect and say, wow, you know, I was talking about this stuff. It wasn't me, though. It was our king leading me to bring it out. Just like he did here. I got to talk about Ted Cruz and watch. We'll do this little piece again. Office, And it's not just Senator Ted, my friend. But I have an email that was sent to all of these email addresses. And you know what, sir? Not one response did I get from a human being. There I go, brain dead. Except from the circ except from the appellate court that was trying to So point being, there is a lot of work and effort that goes into this. I mean, in order to clean it up, as I say, I gotta go in here and with each of these, and this bar is only showing like a minute's time or so. Not even really, I mean, here is 21 minutes and six seconds, and over here is 22 minutes and 17 seconds. So it's about a minute and a half or so that this bar is. And in that minute and a half, I gotta go through all these getting rid of these big brain dead areas, hoping I can match it up. You see my hand up here, how it's moving. So for me to clean that up, I gotta, you know, I might only take a couple seconds off. I'll, I'll click it there in that part there so that you could see where this area is right here that I'm going to delete it is from here there's a spot there that i didn't move but i started moving my hand afterwards but it's a little bit long on the hesitation so what we'll do is we'll just delete that little part and then it looks as though it's more fluid from the cert except from the appellate court okay so but even i would have to cut that part out completely to make sense and then try to make my hands match back up again from a human being except from the appellate court you know so it takes a lot of work in here and sometimes I'll put back things but this is I'm only using for the example this isn't anything as far as the true edit of this video I'm putting out for Grady Judd as well as y'all too to, to show you the injustices that do take place in our lives and you know it seems like our king abandons us and it's really not that at all i i thought that's what was taking place here as i was making yeah. videos except from the appellate court there was but anyway let me show you how to get rid of this what i normally do after i finish a video i'll hit the export up here and sometimes the program even crashes but i'll hit the export oh man it, it didn't show Usually the whole screen will just go black and I'm sitting here like, oh, please, Joshua, please, Joshua, don't let it 
fail, and then boom, this here thing will come up where you'll name whatever it is, okay, X, Y, Z, whatever, and then you would hit the export button, and what it would do is take all your adding and changings and everything else, and it would bring up, and I'm just going out of that to show you where it would end up, is it would say, save target, and then it would open up one of these windows, just like here, where I had the sixth day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, but that was the final product for yesterday's video. And then from there, we would go over here to upload a video to YouTube. You'd click on the upload video, it would bring up a screen, which I'm sure you're aware of because you've posted videos there, my brother. But what we would do is just grab a hold of whatever file, drag it down, and drop it off in the window with a final product. I guess you can say, even though it's not a product, I, I don't charge anything for it. I guess I could say the final blessing. And it would start uploading to YouTube. And then, of course, you go into YouTube. And I'm not certain if you know how to copy, paste links and things of that sort into your video. Or to put in your descriptions or things of that sort. If, you, if you're not aware of it, Timothy P. or anybody else, let me know. I'll show you how to run through that too. The best I can. And I'm by no means a professional at this. I'm just pretty tired by the time I get through with some of these. Especially every day. Because it takes several hours, as you should be able to see here, for me just to clean up a, a little video long enough. I mean, every one of those spaces, and then you got some that's like over here that you gotta take just a little snippet out of there, a little piece, a little sliver, like that, so that it sounds like this. Things that took place would never have taken where otherwise it would have sounded like this because I'll undo that part and you know when it's got too much hesitation or too little hesitation it really can wreck the presentation things that took place would never have taken place see now you might not hear so much of a difference but I do and I'm trying to cut down the time in these videos you know so taking out five or ten parts of a hundredth of a second you know uh, does bring down the length of the video so people have less to complain about. But this is before the cut and then after. The place would never have... Okay, so there's a bit of a hesitation. I'll take out part of the hesitation. Things that took place would never have taken place. So you can see the difference, hopefully. Now, at the end, when I've done the exporting of it, it's been saved off down into the record, the file. Then what I'll do is I'll go up here and I will right click, I'll go down and I'll just hit the delete. And this is after everything's been saved. Now I'm gonna delete that. The emoji stayed on the top, but I'm gonna go out here and close this program out. And it says the project's been modified, do you wanna save the changes? No, I don't, because it takes up a lot of gigabytes and stuff on the computer, slows it down. So I'm just gonna hit no and the program closes out. But anyway, what I wanted to show you, you know, that, you know I, I was laying in my bed earlier and it's like, you know, Yasha, what is it that you want me to bring out today? You know, we've got a video to bring out. And basically what I was showing was something like this, except in my head, I seen an eagle flying in the sky with one of its young and just all of a sudden drops the young and it's like, ah! <laughs> and that's sort of how I feel when I'm bringing out a video and our king is leading me, but then all of a sudden, I run into one of those areas where you got a big long space and I'm like, uh, hello, <laughs> you left me here without giving me the rest of the thought, you know? And I have to wait there until our king refreshes it, but it's, I believe it's our king because he showed me this little thing in my head how we've got to start thinking on our own, but thinking on our own isn't really thinking on our own. It is putting our father's thoughts on us through our righteous king so that their thoughts become our thoughts. And what better way to have this accomplished 
than for our king to just start you off on something and, and then leave you, drop you. And you're like, oh, hey, uh, you know, I'm stuck here without anything to say, you know, I'm so grateful for the editing program, but I feel so dependent on the editing program now where I didn't before. For most of the years that I brought videos, I never edited any of them. I didn't even know how. And if I brought out a big enough error, you know, where I said the wrong scripture or things of this sort, I'd have to snuff the whole film, you know, start all over again, which was actually easier than doing the editing. And of course, we need a holy convocation today, you know, so we need to bring out some scriptures. And I figure what better scriptures than Uremia here, Jeremiah. And let's start out here in Jeremiah chapter 14. This is talking about the sword, famine, and pestilence. And believe you me, the only way that I came up with this is just a moment ago, I, I started to do a search, which would have, you know, gave a little bit of blank area that I got to edit out. And because I had been given, I don't want to say it's a vision, it was a thought, it was something I saw in my head as I laid on the bed, you know, asking her again, why is it that I no longer am eloquent of speech anymore you know you would raise you brought me through over 13 years of public speaking and now when i speak it's like great big gaps and all of a sudden i seen the eagle dropping the you know the check of course the mommy eagle the daddy eagle whatever's dropping it is also watching to see if the chick does figure out how to fly and I'll tell you, some of you may have learned how to swim that way, too. See, when I was young, my brother David, he's the oldest, my brother Jay and myself, and our daddy needed to show us how to swim, so he took us out to Oneida Lake and, you know, like the bird, you know, dropping the chick or kicking it out the nest, our daddy just chucked us off in the water and said, swim, boys, swim, you know, and, and it, it wasn't all that bad once we got out of that burlap sack that he put us in, you know, swimming was a whole lot easier. And no, that's, that's just humor. It actually didn't take place. I just thought you might need a cute story to help understand what we're going to bring out here a little bit clearer. And I say we're, as in myself and our king who's leading me, but what I put in here in the word search was, do not leave us. And I clicked it, and the first thing that came up was Jeremiah 14.9. So I said, you know, I guess that's where our king wants us to go for this last day of his feast, and we're going to comply. And the weird part there, you know, is you and I. <laughs> our king always complies. But anyway, it shows here, Jeremiah speaking in Jeremiah or Jeremiah 14 about the sword, the famine, and pestilence. So what things better to speak about than these today, huh? says, the word of Yahweh that came to Uremia concerning the droughts. Yada mourns and her gates languish. They mourn for the land, and the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. Their nobles have sent their lads for water. They went to the cisterns and found no water. They returned with their vessels empty. They were ashamed and confounded and covered their heads. Now, this also has to do, though this is physically... It had talked about a drought of our father's word, you know, a famine of his word as well. And where these people have searched all over the earth and to the heavens even, sending up spaceships and such and digging as deep as they could in the earth, they've been trying to find the truth of our loving creator to where we could live in peace and have joyous lives, that we have somebody to rule over us that's not man. Even Samuel was tore up, you know, and they, Israel desired to have a king put over him, and it tore Samuel to pieces, you know. He's like, man, they're, and our father said, hey, Samuel, don't you worry about it, man. They're not, they're not going against you, they're going against me, and you're going to give them a king, and that's where King Saul came in, and and why now you see the world everywhere is just ruled under the veil of Satan, under the guise of Satan in her ways, completely refuting our father's ways. But anyway, these lads went out, they couldn't find the truth, the word, the waters of life. And so they returned with their vessels empty. They were ashamed and confounded and covered their heads because the ground is parched and there was no rain in the land. The plowmen were ashamed. They covered their heads. Yes, the deer also gave birth in the field but left because there was no grass. 
Now, I'll tell you something else that a lot of people don't understand. If you raise goats or sheep, and this is talking about deer, of course, but with goats and sheep, if you give them plenty of food, they'll give you two or three or sometimes four offspring at a time. But if you don't feed them enough and they're not joyous, you'll be blessed if you get one that survives. But with great abundance, they'll start pumping out kids like you wouldn't believe or ewes like you wouldn't believe. But anyway, it shows here the deer gave birth in the field and just walked away because there was no way to feed the baby. There wasn't any grass for the mama to eat to produce the milk to feed the baby. It says, and the wild donkey stood in the desolate heights. Hey, I think I better puff my picture up here a little more because you might need to read my lips. All right, so here we are. And the wild donkeys stood in the desolate heights. They sniffed at the wind like jackals. <laughs> Their eyes failed because there was no grass. They were getting hungry. Oh, Father, though our iniquities testify against us. See, you're in new that it was the sins of the people that were causing our father to bring a judgment on them to let them know, hey, look, you need to turn back to me. How many times I got to bring these droughts and everything on you so that you can repent and turn back to me? Return, you know? Humble yourself and pray. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, will humble themselves and pray. Our Father said He'll heal your land. He'll heal you and He'll save your soul from your past sins by His righteous Son's sacrifice. But you can't get to the Father on your own as Uremia used to. He stood before the Father, but the world has gotten so deceived and so defiled since those days that our Father sent His Son. And through His righteous sacrifice, of his own life, our king became our mediator. Even Job spoke about, you know, oh, how can I stand in front of you? We need a mediator. Punch in mediator in a word search and it'll bring you up to the book of Job. Where our king was being spoke of and his purpose even by Job. We hear in Jeremiah 14, 7 says, O Yahweh, though our iniquities testify against us, do it for your name's sake. For our backslidings are many, we have sinned against you. And of course, that should ring bells about 1 Jochanan, chapter 3, verse 4, where it tells you what sin is. Sin is lawlessness. So when you're lawless, then you sin. And Eremia says here, we have sinned against you. Oh, the hope of Israel his savior in time of trouble why should you be like a stranger in the land and like a traveler who turns aside to tarry for a night and that's how i feel you know i'm bringing out a video our king is leading us and then all of a sudden it's like he had to leave me here well he goes to africa or something you know and Help save a turtle dove from a crocodile or something. <laughs> you know, leave me all alone while he's gone. And I'm like, oh, Yahshua, come on, man. You know, this is a time of trouble for me. I got You got me bringing this video, and then you leave me. You know, what's going on? You know, it's like, hello. <laughs> it shows, oh, the hope of Israel, his Savior in time of trouble. And this is our time of trouble, and we got a Savior, Yahshua. Why should you be like a stranger in the land? Like, you hide yourself from us every now and then, but you never leave us. I know that. And like a traveler who turns aside to tarry for a night. Why should you be like a man astonished? Like a mighty one who cannot save? Yet you, O Yahweh, through Yahshua, are in our midst. And we are called by your name. Do not leave us. <laughs> and he doesn't, my friends. If you've been keeping the Feast of Unleavened Bread, if you, kept, if you kept Passover, or if you came in the middle of the Feast, or just today, discovered you should have been keeping the Feast, and you just left aside everything else that you had going and kept the Feast today is the Sabbath, 
Our king will see you and he won't leave you as long as you don't leave him. If you deny our king, he's going to deny you before the holy Malachim. But if you choose now to do what's right, and even though you might be eating pork or something that you thought was okay, because the whole world does it, and it seems like they're all going to get salvation. Well, they're not. They're going to be destroyed. A few men are going to be left after this earth is burned, and that's just before our king returns. And if he didn't shorten the days, you know, none of us would survive. And then again, you got some of those people, you know, always questioning those of the 144,000. Well, can't you be deceived? Well, Scripture itself says they can't, you know. It doesn't mean when they first started out that they couldn't be deceived. Believe you me, I had been deceived many times. And then our king opened up his truth and sent Holy Spirit to me, as he will do for you too if you start believing and loving the laws. And then the Holy Spirit gets you to the point where the Holy Spirit says, well, I got nothing left to teach you right now. We're going to give you to the king. And he's going to personally teach you, which he's doing when I'm bringing out a video. And all of a sudden, it's like, you know, he drops me and I'm like, ah, you know, where'd you go? What am I supposed to say here? You, it was your thought that was coming out of my mouth and, and you left me here now, standing on my own two feet here having to speak for you but our king already put in me what was there and i've just got to realize these things as all of us do that we need our father's thoughts in us our king has our father's thoughts in him that's how he became our true messiah you know was because he put on our father they became at one and that's what we have to do as well but we can't do it on our own, like it says, and we were called by your name, do not leave us. Thus says the Father to his people. Thus they have loved to wander. You know, they went from this religion to that religion. The whole world is deceived, Revelation 12, 9 says. Thus they have loved to wander. They have not restrained their feet. You know, if they thought something looked good, they did it. If they thought it felt good, they did it. If they thought it tastes good, they did it. Without a single concern. And that's why I believe our king has been pushing me toward this fact. See, there he goes. He left me again. He gives me the thought. It's right there. I'm bringing it out. And... He's taking off, looking down on me, saying, are you going to figure it out, boy? <laughs> you know, do I have to do everything for you? Anyway, thus says the Father to his people, thus they have loved to wander. They have not restrained their feet. They worship Mother Nature, the Queen of Heaven, evolution, all sorts of things, their own desires. They went a whoring after the gods of the land of Egypt, as well as the Phoenicians and the Canaanites. And this is why our Father doesn't accept them. Thus they have loved to wander. They have not restrained their feet. Therefore the Father does not accept them. So who does our Father accept? The ones who repent to turn back to him to do his will, which is to live by the Ten Commandments, just like he gave to Moshe. But Father Abraham was keeping the commandments as well. Right here in Genesis chapter 26, verse 5, it says, Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge. And what? My commandments. Abraham kept his commandments, and this was before they were given to Moshe to write down. My statutes, and what else did Abraham, our, our father, who our king, kept saying? If you're of Abraham, you'll do the works of Abraham. If you say he's your father, you'll do his works. And all the religions today say, oh no, don't do works. You can't buy your way in the kingdom. No, but you got to qualify to get there, you know. This is how you qualify. Abraham had it down pretty packed, you know. He, he understood the truth. And because of it, he's got this great reward. And part of that reward is you and me if we're of Abraham. It says, because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my 
laws. It's right there, Genesis 26, verse 5. Please read it yourself. Father Abraham kept our father's laws. Well, how do you like that? Here we are again, having to divide up a video that I thought was only about 20 minutes long. But we'll bring out part two for tomorrow, which is the seventh day Sabbath. I thank you. I praise our Heavenly Father through His righteous Son for the blessings that He allows us. And this is tequila. That is a condensing of our King's precious blood that is represented through... Uh, the wine that after distillation, you know, basically becomes a hard drink. If you're offended by hard drink, then don't watch because I drink this before you, with you, and for our king to enjoy through us. Praise your holy name, Father Yahweh, through Yahshua. Thank you, Yahshua, for the blessings that not all have been entitled to, but some do take your kingdom with force. And yes, uh, you can probably check out from the other part of the video where I had about, you know, less than what I've done already. But as a muscle relaxer last night after putting the videos together to get them up on YouTube for you, I felt so comfortable. I felt no pain. And our king allowed me to rest really well so that I could bring forth his truth for you today and tomorrow. What a blessing. Here I thought, like I said, I had talked maybe 20 minutes and I had no drink when I brought out the video. However, during the editing, I did need to have a couple. And I'm thankful for it. And it's the last day of the feast. I hope that y'all have praised our Father the best you can through His righteous Son, rejoiced in His ways. And if you've kept the feast, our King is paying attention to you. So with that, I do love y'all. Tomorrow we'll bring forth part two for the seventh day Sabbath, wherein I also will bring out what I was wanting to do tomorrow was to point out when the Feast of Pentecost is going to be. And of course, tomorrow, this will be the 3rd of April. The regular seventh day Sabbath will be the very first Sabbath in the seven Sabbath countings that we must do and then on the next day if you multiply seven times seven because it's every seventh day you come up with 49 and on the morrow after will be the 50th day the day of pentecost so till tomorrow i want you to know i love y'all i'm praying for you i got somebody that's going to pass me the gravy at our king's table and i'm so thankful for that and let's have music in our hearts. I love y'all. Bye.